Thank you to the sponsor for this video, Keen. Visit trykeen.com slash Nadia to get your first 10 minutes for only $1.99 with one of their trusted advisors. I too had a chance to try Keen when I was approached to have them as a sponsor. I loved my reading and I only recommend services I trust. Visit trykeen.com slash Nadia to get your first 10 minutes for only $1.99. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of April 24, 2022. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week, without a doubt. Big moves happening in the sky now. And it is an important week, I will tell you. It may end up being one of the most consequential weeks of 2022 for many of us out there. And whereas we have this week, the most romantic day of the year, which is the annual meeting of Venus and Jupiter, this time around, we can say it may just end up being the most romantic day of the decade, considering that Venus and Jupiter are going to meet at Venus's exaltation point. So I'm going to take it one at a time. Allow me to explain because this is a very active and important celestial sky. Mercury is an important part of it, and that's because Mercury helps us to make sense of whatever may be taking place. It helps us to talk things through. It represents our mind-level intellectual understanding of what may be transpiring in our lives at any given time. And so as we start the week, we do have Mercury speaking in a conversation of tension with Saturn. So this is not easy energy, right? This is energy of frustration of feeling like we are very aware of how consequential, how burdensome things can be, very aware of a sense of obligation even. There can be a heaviness to our thoughts as well. Given that Mercury is at the start of the week moving through the sign of Taurus, um, it adds that much more a sense of consequence as to whatever it is that we're talking about or thinking about at the very beginning of the week. The thing is, the wonderful thing is, that the energy changes rather quickly. And it is going to be shortly after that we have Mercury connecting in harmony with Neptune. On Wednesday, Mercury connects in harmony with Jupiter. I feel like this is hope and wisdom and perspective that sets in very quickly, encouraging us to see things differently, encouraging us to talk things through in a way that restores our faith. Faith in ourselves in particular, in our ability in particular. Given that, again, this is Mercury in the sign of Taurus, it invites us to truly own our vision, own our power, and take steps in the direction we desire to go, diligent steps in the direction that we desire to go. With Neptune and with Jupiter, we have faith to see inspiration through to action and faith that those actions are going to count for something in the fullness of time. Now, where it comes to Mercury, though, things get more consequential, really important once we get to Thursday. Mercury will enter shadow. And yes, here we are. What that means is the beginning of the larger Mercury retrograde season. We are now embarking on it. Mercury will enter shadow while in the very end of the sign of Taurus and will very quickly connect in supreme harmony with Pluto. This is a very important connection because it is this connection that is going to define much of this Mercury retrograde season for so many of us out there. I'm going to invite you to think back. Think back to January and February when we had the first Mercury retrograde season of the year. Well, what was the defining characteristic or one of the defining characteristics was the way that Mercury stationed direct hand in hand with Pluto, went into shadow hand in hand with Pluto, stationed direct hand in hand with Pluto in the sky. Well, now, because as part of this year, the uh, Mercury retrogrades that are taking place this year are in the late degrees of Earth signs, but mostly in air signs, this particular Mercury retrograde is no exception to that. It is part of the characteristic of this year. It's almost as if we are being invited to ground ourselves 
And from that intense grounding in these late degrees, this later end, um, end part of earth signs, right? We ground ourselves that much more intently so that we can think that much more. We can expand our horizons on a mind level. We can think more expansively. And so here we have Mercury going into shadow, immediately connecting in supreme harmony with Pluto. Very different energy than that deep dive transformation of Mercury connecting in the sky, meeting Pluto in the sky. Now we have this trine, supremely harmonious connection, which brings with it focus, an understanding of how to transform our circumstances in practical ways. Again, Mercury in Taurus. This is an earth sign. It's about our lived experience. It's also about, I have to say, our sensual experiences as well. That's going to be highlighted with a week like this. Venus being so importantly placed this week as ruling planet of the sign of Taurus. Well, this is going to bring us into focus, invite us to pay attention to a depth of understanding as to what it is we desire to experience, where our senses, our five senses in particular, are taking us, and what could be the deeper significance. What does it mean to truly focus in and hone in on our desires, our desires that are material, our desires that are sensual, but of course, our desires that are spiritual as well. Ultimately, our desires are to live in the present moment, to find freedom in the present moment, because when it is that we live in the present moment, we detach from the worry of the future. We detach from the regret of the past. And that's also a part of the gift of the energy of Taurus. It invites us to be truly present with our five senses here and now. Well, with Pluto, we're invited to focus. We're invited to experience the transformative quality of that sense of being absolutely present for ourselves and our lives. But of course, we are multifaceted human beings. We don't only live embodied. Because it is going to be on Friday that Mercury will change signs. And Mercury is going to move into the sign of Gemini. And this is energy of thought, of mind, of spontaneous connections that we might make with other people. This is also Mercury's home sign, one of Mercury's home signs. And so having Mercury here is a strong place for this energy to be, and it amplifies the communicative qualities now. And so this is going to be an invitation for a lot of us to pay attention to how it is that we're talking to each other, how it is that we're connecting to each other. But I also think that this is going to take us to the next level of what we need as human beings. Yes, we need to be present, right? That's where we find peace. But we also need to feel connected to each other. We need to feel a sense of community. Now, whether you find that community online, especially in our modern world, before, you know, you would find it in newsletters and forums and things like that, um, in the town square, maybe, all of that is Gemini. And so we're invited to connect more with each other, especially spontaneously. You know, I always say, you know, if you've watched me for a while, Travel always restores me to myself and it always reveals like deep truths to me about myself and about humanity in a way that brings me peace. Um, that's my journey, right? Everybody has their own pathway to peace. Travel is a big part of mine. And the one thing that is always affirmed to me when I travel always is that the world is abundant in love. There is so much love in the world and that people desperately want to be connected to each other. They want to be seen. They want to be acknowledged. Just a moment that you might spend in an exchange with another person can end up being deeply meaningful to them, have prolonged consequence, positive consequence, well after a given moment is over. And so it is ultimately the energy of Gemini that invites us to love by acknowledgement, to see another person, to have that exchange that maybe others or some might think of as superficial because it's surface level, because it's a nod, because it's a, a brief exchange in an elevator, whatever the case may be. But 
that is actually a moment of love. That is a way in which that we acknowledge that the other exists. I remember years and years ago, a friend of mine, like this is going back about 20 years, a friend of mine, he was telling me about how he was walking around the city and he said, you know, I was walking around and I kept waiting for someone to look at me. I just wanted somebody to look at me and I couldn't believe that nobody looked at me. And I said to him, like, who did you look at? <laughs> who did you acknowledge, right? Who did you pay attention to? Because it's as Eckhart Tolle says, right? Give the thing that you desire the universe to give to you. Whatever your request is of the universe, focus instead on giving that very thing that you want returned to you. And the world is so abundant in love. And these are all ways in which we love each other. Simple acknowledgement, a look in the eye, a nod of the head, but of course, conversation, letting someone know that it's okay, everything's okay. Wanting that connection is a powerful thing. And so the bulk of this Mercury retrograde season will be spent with Mercury moving through the sign of Gemini, its home sign, inviting us to be so present for others. With Mercury and Taurus, we're present for ourselves. With Mercury and Gemini, we're present for others. And we're present in a way that ultimately, at its very root, is an act of love. Now, that's Mercury, right? The bulk of this Mercury retrograde season, we're going to be considering, talking about, focusing on others. But I do invite you to keep in mind that... <laughs> Pay attention to what happens once Mercury goes into the sign of Gemini. Once we get into next month, we'll go retrograde in the first days of June, we'll go direct. So we're going to have this extensive period of having Mercury move in and out of the sign of Gemini. I'm going to invite you to consider what is taking place because this is the very beginning of Gemini energy, if you will, right? That's one way to put it. Um, once we navigate further into the year in August, Mars is moving into Gemini in September, Mars is moving into shadow and we'll go retro at the end of October. I mean, there is just such a powerful Mars and Gemini Mars retrograde season coming up ahead. Um, that's going to end up being very powerful. I think that this Mercury in Gemini is going to be a little bit of a trial run. It's going to invite us to consider how do we address Gemini energy? How do we engage it? How do we engage each other? How do we be present for each other before things intensify and get this burst of adrenaline with Mars? Right now with Mercury, there's that healthy detachment. So how can we do that? How can we have a sense of ourselves and love for ourselves? and love each other as well. Because we have the contrast playing out right now as well, and that takes me to Venus. Venus in Pisces, meeting Neptune, meeting Jupiter, right? Piscean energy doesn't have that sense of self. It doesn't have that boundary. The sign of Gemini is the twins, right? So that can be understood as seeing others as our sibling, but it can also be understood as there's me and there's you. And yeah, we connect. We are each other, but I'm still me. I still have me over here. Pisces is the ocean. And in the ocean, all the drops of the ocean are just one mass. It's all together. And everything blends and blurs together. And it's so easy to lose ourselves if we're just a part of one large ocean. And we're going to have that very strong Piscean energy playing out this week, magnified, right? Jacked up Piscean energy, as I would say. And it's going to be so strong, and especially where it comes to love, our desire to lose ourselves in love is going to be so strong that we might tell ourselves it's there. We might tell ourselves it's there without necessarily having all the evidence in place. But that's okay, right? That can be part of love, part of what allows us to love again. Because here's the thing about love. Love can take us on a journey. Love can take us through the range of feelings and emotions 
that we are going to experience as human beings. Love can disappoint us, love can hurt, love can feel like a betrayal, but then love can also be profoundly healing. Love makes everything okay. Love helps us to heal very old wounds that we might think might never heal. Wounds that we weren't even consciously aware of, they get stirred and it hurts and there's love and everything's okay. It's with love that we find acceptance, deep acceptance for ourselves because we see that we might be able to find it in another. And it's a very powerful thing. It's a reason why it's a core human drive. If you consider Maslow's hierarchy, which I refer to from time to time, right? In Maslow's hierarchy of needs, he talks about how the very foundational needs are things like clothing and food and shelter, right? We need that to survive. These are our basic necessities. But once we have our basic necessities met, our needs change. They start to evolve. They start to go up the pyramid. And the next level up is meaningful relationships. Why is that? We have a deep human need to be connected to each other, but we have a deep human need to know love. And that includes an intimacy. And that doesn't have to be physical. It doesn't have to be physical. It doesn't have to be romantic. As much as we have a need to be acknowledged as individuals, just like all the signs have needs, we also have a need to merge with each other, to merge into the collective, to know the divine within us, to experience the ecstasy of the divine. All of this contrast of needs is going to come right to the surface in a very intense way. And so what adds to the intensity of this time? Well, it's Pluto. It is going to be on Friday that Pluto is going to go retro. Pluto at the end, right? At getting to that end of the sign of Capricorn, right? We are in anoretic degrees at this point. The end degrees of a sign is when the energy is that much more concentrated. It's that much more magnified. And so we've got Pluto here now intensified already because it's standing still in the sky. When a planet is standing still in the sky and changing directions, it's as close to the earth as it's going to get. It's magnified in its power and its symbolism for us. And so you add to it this element now that it's also at an anoretic degree. It's at the very end of the sign. And so we've got this concentration of Plutonian energy, and that is a desire to merge in a different way than the Piscean desire. The Piscean desire to merge is one of bliss. The desire of Pluto to merge is one of transformation. It's one to feel. It's about feeling everything intensely and totally and deeply. It's not about escaping the feelings but rather it's about embracing them, all of them, messy and complicated. Whereas Piscean energy brings healing balm on those deep wounds. It is Pluto that stirs the wounds, that brings them right to the surface. Pluto can also represent powerlessness. Things are going to change. They got to change when Pluto changes directions. And ultimately, Pluto going retrograde is going to lead us back to ourselves. And the changes that happen now are faded. They are karmic. And ultimately, they are good. I think that we will see the love and wisdom in them, with all the Piscean energy playing out. That doesn't mean there isn't disappointment. That doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. And so there may be hurt there as well. And yet, you're going to be okay. We are going to be okay because it's a part of life. It's a part of this human experience that we have co-created together, that we desire to embrace together. And Pluto going retrograde, Pluto standing still, actually, I think that this is one of the most human moments that is set to take place. When we realize how powerless we can be over people, places, things, situations, including ourselves, including what we feel. It's the most human understanding that we can have. But it's also when we might feel most alive. 
It is a feeling of life. Bliss is not necessarily life. It can be a part of it. When it's more rare, it's more valuable. And yet it truly is the messiness and still being willing to see the beauty in it. That is where the best of whom it is that we are comes forward. Now, if all of this wasn't enough, and I know I haven't delved into uh, Venus just yet, and I will in just a moment, but I want to mention, look, we've also got a solar eclipse. It's a massive astrological week. That solar eclipse is close in the sky with Uranus, and this is actually a key characteristic of the eclipses of this year. I will link the 2022 horoscope below so you can have a look at that. But a key characteristic of this year is the fact that we have got these powerful energies playing out right now. Um, but a key characteristic is that the eclipses and the North Node and Uranus, it's all jumbled up together. <laughs> At key moments, it's especially stronger than other moments, but it's around all year. And this is just one of those moments where Uranus and the power of change, and in some cases, dramatic change and dramatic truth is going to make itself known. For better or worse, it's going to come right to the surface now. And so brand new beginnings out of nowhere are just going to show up. Normally, an eclipse brings with it, a solar eclipse in particular, brings with it dramatic new beginnings that ultimately align us with greater love and greater wisdom, some higher, more loving vision for our life in at least one area of life. You add Uranus into the mix, there's that much more shock. There's that much more surprise. There's that much more drama. But I'm about to say something that is very Aquarian, <laughs> very Aquarian. I don't think that there are enough surprises in life. Yes, I said it. I said it. Sometimes there's not enough surprises in life. That won't be the case with this eclipse. All of us, I think all of us are going to have one kind of surprise or another. The thing with Uranus as well, and also a solar eclipse, is that it's a wake-up call. They're called wake-up calls, right? There's a key word that some I've heard over the years as I was learning astrology. Uranus is the wake-up call. A solar eclipse is a wake-up call. Now imagine the two of them together. It's a massive wake-up call. Now imagine that happening right around the same time that we have energy that's almost like the opposite of a wake-up call. It is pure bliss. Now let's talk about Venus. Venus meeting Jupiter at Venus's exaltation point. This is a very, very rare phenomenon that is set to take place. We are not likely to see this again in our lifetime. Although we will see Venus meeting Jupiter again. Every year that happens. Every 12 years or so, Venus meets Jupiter in the sign of Pisces. The ancients identified where planets most like to be. So they had ways of classifying the position of planets in the sky, in the chart. And so when a planet is at home, think about you at home, right? You're really comfortable there. So a planet is comfortable there. It's able to operate with ease, as is the case with Mercury moving into the sign of Gemini on Friday this week. And then there are signs in which a planet really loves to be in. And there's a rationale to this. Like this goes all the way back to and is explained in Tetra Biblos by Ptolemy. And so in Tetra Biblos by Ptolemy, he actually lays out the rationale why certain planets really like to be in certain signs and you know how that brings forward their very best qualities. Now within those given signs, right? There's going to be one degree, one degree where that planet is most happy. Planets will be very, very extremely happy in a given sign that's called exalted. The exaltation degree is that one degree that that planet most will love to be in. There are 360 degrees of a zodiac. There are only 30 degrees where a planet will be exalted. There's only one degree that is the exaltation point, And that is where Venus will be 
when Venus meets Jupiter. This is a very rare event. This is going to magnify love for all of us in one way or another. It may very well be universal love, right? That's a very strong possibility now. Universal love being magnified. Humanitarian love or a sense of communion around the world magnified in some way. Very possible now. I will add, I know that this is a whole side note and, you know, I'm, I hate being political or anything like that. I like to bring people together, uh, not necessarily, you know, separate people. I will say, I was saying since last year, I've been telling you, Jupiter and Pisces, this is, you know, easing restrictions. This is going to be where we start to feel more and more like we're moving on from the pandemic. The pandemic starts to feel more and more behind us. Uh, we saw that recently with so many mask restrictions being lifted with uh, Neptune meeting Jupiter. That's about to go to a whole other level. I will say all kinds of restrictions are about to be even more lifted in even more places where they weren't expected to be. With a week like this, we're going to see that really take into that much more full effect. So that's a side note. That's one manifestation of this. But of course, the more universal manifestation of this, the more archetypal manifestation of this, Venus, goddess of love, meeting Jupiter, magnifies love. At its exaltation point, well, it becomes that much more universal. It becomes that much more important as well. We see the value in love. We see the value in knowing ourselves as each other, not through each other, as each other. Romantic love as well. Yes, this may very well turn out to be the most romantic day of the decade. Now, if it feels like romantic love isn't happening for you, not a big deal <laughs> because there's always opportunities to know love always. The universe is abundant in love. There will always be opportunities to know love, romantic uh, or otherwise, universal, platonic, friendship, all of it, right? There's so many different types of love that are amplified. And all of that is going to be known at a time like this. And so, we are going to see universal examples of how love and sacrifice go together. Pisces is an energy of sacrifice as well. And that's one form of love, right? The sacrifices we make. The sacrifice is an energy of thinking of someone else before we think of ourselves. That's one way to understand love. Another way to understand love, well, it has to do with understanding compassion being genuinely compassionate towards other people, being willing to feel what they feel is a way that we love each other. There's a saying like we're human beings, we're supposed to help each other, right? What is that rooted in? It's rooted in compassion. In compassion, there's a reason why it's considered this great idealized virtue because we are better when we think about each other. There's that balance, of course, right? You don't want to lose so much of yourself. But at the same time, there's something very beautiful about giving so much love that, you not, that you're not necessarily thinking about yourself. It's all very powerful. And that's the kind of power that we are going to have at our fingertips now. So in a more practical sense, look, it's a wonderful time if you are so inclined propose, take a step, make a plan, right? All of that, beautiful to do now. But it's also a very profound time to meditate. It's a profound time to think about what it means to connect with universal love. It's a great time to ask someone out on a date. And if the person says no, to know that it's okay. And if the person says yes, to feel totally elated and swept up. Remember, a lot of us are going to be feeling like we are in a situation that is too good to be true. We've met someone, they're the person of our dreams, we're swept up off our feet. It's the most beautiful thing. It's like the greatest 
thing of love that the whole world and history has ever known. And that might be the case. But it's also possible that we want to know love. We want to know the bliss of being loved so much that we're willing to accept what shows up. And we're willing to see what it is that we want, but that is necessary. Like I said at the beginning, love can hurt. To trust someone, to open yourself up to somebody, and then to feel like that wasn't held in sacred space can be painful. And yet we try again. And why do we try again? Because we have hope. And why do we have hope? Because we know that love can be profoundly healing and transformative, that love can represent the best that we can know as human beings. And that love can elevate us. It can help us to know ourselves in new ways. It can help us to become something more. Now what love means to you, how you align with it, that is gonna be part of your unique journey. But this week, is going to offer us all love in a profound way and in a rare way as well with this celestial power available to us. What I love about this week for us, well, of course, it's got to be the most romantic day of the decade. That's what I'm calling it. Venus connecting with Jupiter at Venus's exaltation point. This is a very big deal. This is one of these shining star moments. I say that with caution because I know, look, you don't want to set up too much of a heightened thing. You don't want to set yourself up and yet do something, something that expresses love to you. Like I said, meditate. Make the intention to meditate. Do something. I'll try to remember to post a meditation. I got a lot going on right now, but I'll try because I think it's that powerful and important a time. I know I'll be doing a meditation, I'll be taking a step, I'll be doing something to try and connect with water, connect with love of the universe, feel love in my heart, connect with other people, have that energy exchange. All of it can be very powerful now. It can be transformative, it can cleanse us. There's a reason why so many spiritual traditions talk about how water cleanses. Water represents rebirth, allowing ourselves to be submerged in water. We come out anew. We come out something more than we were before. And this week offers us that opportunity in so many ways and in so many layers now to become more than we knew ourselves to be before. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys and to prove it to you, here are some of my most recent favorite comments. Thank you to everybody who likes, who comments, who subscribes, who shares, who thumbs up. All of it means so much. Thank you for hitting the notification bell as well. Now, if you would like to know what all this incredible celestial conversations and events mean for you and your sign, you can log on to NadiaShawSuperstars.com where you can get expanded, exclusive video scopes for each and every sign each and every week for as low as just $3 a month. That's right, $3 a month with Choose Your Membership Rate. Now, higher tiers get you things like all access passes to Synchronicity University events, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space at NadiaShawSuperstars.com. I look forward to meeting you there. Synchronicity University presents incredible classes underway right now with me, but also coming up very soon this spring and this summer at Synchronicity University. I hope that you will join me. It's a very exciting time. Now, my own classes are underway at the moment, and you can check them out here on the screen, all these wonderful things that I'm teaching, teaching on Vesta, teaching on Lilith and Sinistry, the Sun, the Midheaven, the Ascendant, and so much more, the astrology of style and fashion and child parent sinistry, so much is going on. And so I hope that you will join me for my classes taking place over the course of this spring on now. You can get your single classes going at synchronicityuniversity.com. Link is in the description below.
Synchronicity University presents the one and only Melissa Sanova. Melissa Sanova, look, choose your tuition rate on for just one more week. And she is the perfect person to teach a class on magic. She is a best-selling author of the Kitchen Table series. She previously taught Kitchen Table Tarot. Now she's teaching Kitchen Table Magic. And I love her. I just have to say, this is somebody I love so much. I have two planets in Sag. She's got like nine planets in Sag. Uh, I posted an interview with her earlier this week. Uh, I will link to that below as well. And you can see, I'm really holding back my saucy talk. But once the camera goes out, oh yes, we are getting saucy with the language and all of that. I just find her so amazing and so brilliant. She's such a great teacher. So she's the perfect person to help us to understand magic, how to put that intention in the world, how to cultivate it, how to magnify it. And it's just one week left to choose her tuition rate, as low as just $5 a class to learn from this best-selling author, Melissa Sanova at synchronicityuniversity.com. You can learn more and sign up now. Link is in the description below. Synchronicity University presents incredible classes coming up this summer and spring. Let me start with the one and only Achuta from Nightlight Astrology. He is just a brilliant, brilliant astrologer. I think he's one of the best out here. I gotta say, YouTube sensation as well. He's gonna be teaching on the mystical roots of astrology, and this is such a thorough class. It's gonna be looking at the mystical understanding of the houses, of the planets, of the signs, and really, he has so much knowledge. He's taught at Synchronicity University before, so you know how brilliant he is. He has his own channel on YouTube as well. So I hope that you'll check that out. Look, right now you can choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class from who I think really is one of the best astrologers out here in the world today. I will say it. I put it out there. I follow very, very few astrologers. I watch even fewer astrologers. He's like the only or one of the very, very few that I will allow myself to watch because he shares things in a way that is so different from me that there's no way I'm going to plagiarize him. So that's one thing I'm very conscious of wanting to give credit where credit is due. The other thing is, gosh, he's just so good. He's just so brilliant. I love that he's coming to Synchronicity University. And I hope that you'll check that out again. As low as just $5 a class for a limited time only with Choose Your Tuition Rate for the one and only Achuta at Nightlight Astrology at SynchronicityUniversity.com. Link is in the description below. And Synchronicity University presents the one and only Mark Lawrenson of the Sydney School of Astrology. And he's going to be teaching the soul's mission in the birth chart. What a wonderful topic. Now, you have seen him on my channel before. You've seen him at Synchronicity University before. He is a master teacher. If you want to know how to be an incredible teacher. Just take a class with him and you'll really see what it means to be uh, just such a master at what you do. And he has this worldwide following as well of students as part of the Sydney School of Astrology. And he's just so good. I love having brilliant astrologers at Synchronicity University and making them so accessible to you guys as well. And so for a limited time only, you can choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class for the one and only Mark Lawrenson teaching the soul's mission in the birth chart, synchronicityuniversity.com. Link is in the description below. And finally, I'm going to be at the Norwalk Conference. Yes, live events are back at the end of May, which is right around the corner. I will be in Seattle, Washington, and I just cannot wait. I can't wait to hug friends and fans, I tell you. I'm going to have two classes and one keynote, so lots of opportunities to hear me speak. And I, again, I just want to hug people. I just want to see people again. I'm just so happy about that. I also have a limited number of spaces available for consultations. And so if you would like an in-person consultation and you're in the Seattle area, please do reach out uh, via my website, the contact form on my website. All the links are below. So Learn more about the Norway Conference, link below, but also learn more about connecting with me as well. You don't have to have a consultation to connect with me. I'm willing to hug you if you show up, and I'm looking forward to that as well. Seattle, Washington, yes, it's going to be a lot of fun. Link is in the description below, and thank you. 
So I am uh, spending my last, oh, not very much longer here in, uh, here in Ecuador. I've got about 24 hours left in Ecuador uh, by the time this posts. And so I just have to say it's been incredible. I'm so grateful to this country. Maybe I'll put more about it. I'll post more about it. I'll certainly be posting more about it on Instagram as well. But I just feel like this place restored me in such powerful ways. I found a newfound, I don't know, awakening, a passion, a curiosity that defines the best of me. And for that, I am just so, so very grateful to this country. It'll always be a part of me. I wanted uh, to share some images here so you can see some of the incredible experiences I had seeing like birds I've only ever seen on TV to actually see them in their natural habitat and just to walk uh, right on the equator in so many ways as well and to be on the beach and to feel that lightness that the sun brings to understand why the sun god was so important to the Incan people in this region. I did also want to let you guys know of the most incredible tour guide that you're ever going to meet anywhere in the world. His name is Mateo and I am very happy to share his WhatsApp with you whenever it is that you are ready to come to Ecuador, which I hope is soon. He's completely bilingual English and Spanish and really I thank him so much because of him and his guidance, uh, the way in which I experienced this country was so transformed with his wisdom, his insight, his historical knowledge, um, his practical knowledge, all of it, his enthusiasm and love for his country. Uh, and he brought that to being a tour guide. And for that, I'm so grateful. It's amazing how the right people find you as you need them. And I really felt that here so powerfully. The most amazing hairdresser. <laughs> My hair has been looking pretty good, according to me anyways, lately. The most amazing hairdresser here in Quito, uh, Ecuador as well. And I'm happy to hook you up with that also. And so thank you. Thank you, Ecuador. Thank you for all the blessings that will stay with me really for the rest of my life. And um, I don't share a lot about my own life, right? I love that my work, I don't have to think about me. <laughs> I love it. I don't have to think about me for a while. And then after my work is done, I think about me and I I see it differently. I see my own life differently as a result of being present for you. Um, but my own life has been going through a lot of changes, certainly over the last year and a half, but over the last couple months as well. And it really is, it was Ecuador that restored me, that brought me back to myself. And I will always remember this land for that. So thank you. Just thank you to Ecuador. And thank you guys out there for sharing this moment, these experiences with me as well. I'm so grateful for it. And thank you for watching. And I send you hugs. I hope I get to hug you in person in Seattle or in Denver in August as well. And other things I'm trying to put into place because, gosh, I missed us. I missed us. And I'm happy that we stayed connected online. And I'm happy to be meeting you guys in person soon again, very soon as well. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy. Welcome to the exciting rebirth of Superstar featuring Choose Your Membership Rate as low as just $3 a month. At Superstar, you get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, class passes for Synchronicity University, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the Superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there.